Hey everyone, I bought another x-ray tube set off eBay and uh, today I finally got the filament supply working so I think this thing is almost ready to fire up. Uh, but first I wanted to show you how uh, an x-ray tube typically works. You've got an anode here and a filament here and you put a large DC voltage across these two and then you heat up the filament with a uh, typically a high current low voltage source and it's actually the temperature of the filament that regulates how much power the tube is going to uh, consume and it's a nonlinear relationship so as you heat up the filament uh, i.e. put more current through the tungsten uh, piece of wire it'll get hotter uh, you get more and more emission current which is the amount of current flowing uh, through the high voltage supply so when I first got this tube from eBay I fired it up sort of a test run and um, was very surprised to find out that the filament is floating. So I'll show you later, but I, I re was really under the assumption that this was a grounded path and that the high voltage would just flow to ground, but that's actually not the case. And the reason that they floated the filament was so that you could put a current sense resistor here and then measure the voltage across this current sense resistor and use that number to control the filament temperature. So this control box here is this and I spent quite a bit of time figuring out how to um, use this thing because there's just a big DB25 connector on the back there and there's no there's no information. I, I contacted the manufacturer and got a surprisingly got a response right away but the response was we can't help you and I you know pleaded one more time and they said no. So I carefully looked at the circuit and did a very crude kind of reverse engineering sort of diagram of it. This is probably not hundred percent accurate but it, it, it got the job done. So the point of this circuit is to measure the amount of emission current going through the tube and then adjust the amount of filament current to achieve a specific emission. And since we have this nonlinear relationship here, the circuit has to be a closed loop and um, quick reacting so that you don't get a runaway condition. I should also point out that the circuit doesn't just use a simple current sense resistor. There's actually an optoisolator in there and some other circuitry, but essentially this is basically what it does. And the voltage across this sense resistor is essentially here in the circuit. So like I say, there's other components in here, but more or less the amount of current that is going out the filament is what's connected to this point in the circuit. And uh, there's two op amps in there. There's an LM358, which is a dual op amp and these are the two parts of it. And uh, this first stage is just set up as a non-inverting 10x stage. So conveniently the DB25 connector J1 includes uh, a tap to the output of this op amp. So as the current in and out of the filament changes, the current, or rather the voltage here changes. So 0 to 1 milliamp here indicates 0 to 10 volts here. I have one power supply set up so that I can push current into the filament as if the tube were running and I'm measuring the current with the multimeter here and I'm measuring the voltage at this node in the circuit with the oscilloscope and as you can see if we've got you know half a milliamp of, of current we've got five volts on the scope so this is the simple 10x gauge, uh, gain stage here the second half of the circuit is an integrator so the output from the op amp goes through a capacitor and one of the capacitors has a 10k resistor across it and the other capacitor doesn't have any resistor across it. So this functions as as close to a pure integrator as possible. And essentially this is open loop. If the integrator doesn't have any resistance in the feedback path, this thing will just continue making the output go up or down without bound. So the reason that this system works is because the feedback comes in the form of the, of the tube itself. So as more filament current flows through here, more emission current will flow. And then the uh, emission current will be measured by this and it will be fed back into the circuit. So what, what confused me for a little while was this connection. This is actually the set current. And so they're probably using this sort of virtual ground concept. So what you do is you put a voltage here that you want this thing to mash and the voltage will correspond to the emission current, the desired emission current. Right now I have this one ohm resistor taking the place of the filament and I'm measuring the current through the resistor with this meter here. So currently we have uh, 3.12 amps going through there. There's also a set 
a set potentiometer on this board to set the maximum current even when the integrator goes all the way to its end and so I guess it's set right around to about 3 amps right now. This meter is measuring the simulated current going into the filament so as if this were connected to a, an x-ray tube this would be the emission current and I can adjust that with a, a supply here. So I've basically just connected my uh, power supply through this, I think it's about a 5k resistor here, into the filament loop. So I've basically put um, a power supply in place of the x-ray tube uh, with a resistor so that I can control the current going through there. So if I turn the current up, now you notice that the uh, uh, filament current has gone to zero because we're now drawing enough current where the set point has been reached. And if I turn this back down, now the current rises again. So instead of adjusting this, I can also adjust the set point. Right now it's about 3.3 .3 volts. If I turn the set point down, eventually the current drops down. And so now it's about 2.4 volts on, um, on this node here. Okay, so I've got the whole thing set up here. This is the supply that we were just working on, the filament supply, and to it I've added this little control box. Uh, the control box just has a couple of voltage regulators, a couple of trim pots for the meters, a couple of potentiometers, and a voltage follower. The follower takes the 10 volt current sense signal from here and displays it on this meter. This is a pretty crappy meter. This one's a little bit better. This one just measures the voltage sense coming from the high voltage supply. Uh, so this is a 28 volt switching power supply that powers the 50 kilovolt uh, high voltage supply for the tube. The x-ray tube itself is back here and it has a lead uh, plate in front of it that's kind of cracked open a little bit with the Geiger counter sitting next to it so we can tell if there's x-rays coming out. I've got my current probe clamped onto the, one of the filament lines and that will show amperage here. Um, I've got this meter set up just to measure voltage coming out of the current sense coming out of the voltage supply. So we actually have two current senses here. One of them is in the filament supply and one of them is from the voltage supply. Since the voltage supply knows how much current it's producing at 50 kV, uh, they should be in agreement. In the original circuit they didn't use the current sense from the high voltage supply, but I, I soldered a wire on. We'll just check it to make sure. Okay, so I'm going to plug in the high voltage supply. And you can see the needle on the gauge went up here, so we're reading about 50 kilovolts. And now I'm going to plug in the filament supply. Okay, and nothing's happening yet because I haven't set the uh, current set point here. So if I turn this up a little bit, we can see there's activity and we're getting some readings here. And that was just a, a little burst. So if I turn this up, almost all the way we can get up to about one milliamp of emission there's about a tenth of an amp flowing through the filament and the current meter here is also agreeing with with the uh, one milliamp so it appears we have the whole thing working properly it's very controllable the voltage is independently adjustable from the emission current and um, I'm ready to basically box all this thing up and then build the tube into my backscatter detector Alright, hope you enjoyed that. See you next time. Bye.